Before you are legends of the ring, some of the greatest boxers the world has ever known. Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, to your left and clockwise, Larry Holmes and Jack Dempsey, and to the right, Evander Holyfield and Rocky Marciano. There are some big names with ties to Northeast Ohio as well. Mike Tyson, who once owned a home in Southington, Ohio. Ernie Shavers, who once worked at a General Motors plant in Lordstown, Ohio in the 1960s. And Youngstown, Ohio native Ray Boom Boom Mancini. But wait, there's another man in the center here who has just as big a name as all the others I've mentioned. Johnny Kilbane. Never heard of him? Well, allow me to introduce you to him on this episode of History and Relics. John Patrick Kilbane, better known as Johnny, was born on April 9, 1889, in Cleveland, Ohio. His mother, Mary, died when Johnny was three. Johnny attended school only until the sixth grade, when he dropped out to support his family. Johnny and his family originally lived in Cleveland's Old Angle, before moving uptown in 1910, near the intersection of West 74th and Herman Avenue on Cleveland's west side. The Herman Avenue home was built around 1900 and is still there today in what's known as Kilbane Town. In March 2012, Cleveland's Landmark Commission named Johnny's house and street as a historical landmark. Let's pay a visit. Kilbane was intrigued with boxing and was first exposed to the sport in 1907 when local Cleveland boxer Phil Brock and Jimmy Dunn of Pennsylvania were scheduled to fight. Prior to the fight, Dunn trained in Vermilion, Ohio. Locals, including Kilbane, followed him there to watch. Dunn was set to spar with a guy named Frazier, who, upon arrival, reported that he'd hurt his hand and was unable to spar. Dunn, still wanting to spar, opened up the opportunity to the crowd. All the Cleveland Westsiders elected Kilbane. This 18-year-old, 110-pound kid had never before had gloves on, let alone sparred with anyone. After a few rounds, Dunn was impressed with the young lad's abilities, which got him an invite back to Dunn's camp, and the two would later strike an accord. Fights in Cleveland only took place at private clubs, with one of these being the LaSalle Club, located on West 25th Street near the old High Level Bridge. One of the notable fighters at the LaSalle Club was Kid Campbell, a 135-pound lineman who worked for the Ohio Bell Telephone Company. 
Campbell was short and stocky, and Kilbane was long and lanky, but the two decided to match up on a Sunday afternoon where admission was about 25 cents. Although Campbell had 25 pounds on Kilbane, Johnny's jabs and quickness around the ring were enough to get the job done. Johnny knocked Campbell out in the sixth round for his first win and a purse of between eight and twenty-five dollars. Often at fights, fans could get souvenirs like the ones you see here at the top left of your screen of Rocky Marcianos. A mini glove or a set of them or a pin were common. Next to Rocky's is a signed mini glove of Johnny Kilbane, recently authenticated by Beckett Authentication Services. It's inscribed to Tommy. Now we don't know if this signed mini glove was inscribed to the same Tommy that we're about to talk about, but nonetheless, it's an incredible relic. So living on the next street over from Johnny was another family by the name of Kilbane, although not related to one another. That family had a son about Johnny's age and size named Tommy. The two boys didn't get along too well. Spats developed into arguments and arguments into neighborhood street brawls. Inevitably, Tommy became a fighter too, and he and Johnny would later tie up in three or four round bouts where each ended in a draw. This only added fuel to the fire. Some six months went by, but tensions and local demand grew. Finally, in the fall of 1908, the two Kilbane kids would meet up again, this time for a 25-round matchup. The fight was held at Watson's Farm on Pearl Road and was refereed by a John Rudy of the Cleveland Fire Department. An audience of over 400 at a dollar a head came to see the match. It was a vicious contest, through and through, but in the 23rd round, Johnny left little doubt as to who the better man was and landed a right-hand blow to Tommy's chin, knocking him to the mat. The feud between the two would later subside once they became stable mates under Jimmy Dunn. Johnny's celebrity grew, and by February 22, 1912, he was ready to take on the World Championship in a 20-round fight that would take place in Vernon, California against Abe Attell. All 10,000 seats of the arena were filled, with thousands more turned away due to max capacity limits being met. Johnny led from the start, as he outgamed and outhit his opponent. Attell, though, decided to play a bit dirty and headbutted Kilbane in the 16th, causing Johnny to bleed profusely from around his left eye. But Kilbane continued on, never faltering, and fought with all his might. Finally, the decision by referee Charlie Eaton was rendered. Johnny Kilbane was the winner and the new featherweight champion of the world. Johnny returned home to Cleveland on St. Patrick's Day to the largest gathering in the history of the city, with over 200,000 people welcoming the champ home. Johnny fought over 140 fights in his career, losing only four, and held the featherweight title longer than anyone in the history of boxing in any weight class, from 1912 to 1923, when he lost against Eugene Creakey at the Polo Grounds. World heavyweight boxer Joe Lewis would be the next to hold a championship title longer, from 1937 to 1949. After his boxing career, Johnny Kilbane became a referee in Ohio, operated a gym, taught phys ed at local schools, and dabbled in real estate. He entered into politics and was elected a state senator in 1941. He was also a state representative until he won a spot as a municipal court clerk in 1951. Johnny was happily married to Irene McDonald, and the couple had two children, Mary, who you see here playing the violin, and Helen, top right next to the chair. Sadly, Helen died at the age of six, but Mary later became Mary O'Toole and gave her mom and dad two grandchildren, John and Thomas. Johnny passed away on May 31, 1957, and was buried on June 4. His wife Irene died a few short months later on December the 12th. Daughter Mary passed away on August 3, 1993. 
The Kilbanes are buried at Calvary Cemetery in Cleveland, Ohio. The family's grave site can be found at Section 9, Lot 333, and Grave Number 5. Posthumously, Johnny was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1995. In 2012, a statue on a chill island in Ireland was erected, honoring from where his parents immigrated. Then, in 2014, the city of Cleveland created a series of statues of Johnny from throughout his career in Battery Park that's located just a few minutes' walk from his home on Herman Avenue. While Johnny Kilbane is no longer a household name, it should never be forgotten that the Irish-American boxer was one of the biggest celebrities to emerge from Cleveland in the first part of the 20th century, and who held such prestigious records that only a handful of boxers have ever accomplished since. Well, that's the end of this round. Thank you for watching today's story. We'd like to send a special thank you out to Kevin O'Toole. Johnny's great-grandson, for allowing us to use some of the photos you've seen today. To learn more about Johnny Kilbane, please visit Kevin's website at www.johnnykilbane.com. Join us again real soon for another exciting bit of history and relics. And until next time, everyone, this one is history. <laughs>